Let's be honest, web design is hard. It's difficult to do very, very well. But in this video, I'm gonna share with you seven tips and tricks, seven foundational principles of web design that if you can master these principles, it's gonna elevate your skill set to the next level and make you a master of web design. The back button that is natively part of every web browser is still to this day the most common and highly used piece of functionality in the browser to date. And that's because the five second rule is very much alive and kicking. This means that you have five seconds once your website loads to make an impression and actually connect with the user and you need to be answering the user's needs right away and if you're not doing that in five seconds they're gonna hit that back button they're gonna be out of here we have for example the bank of america small business website and when i load up this website there is far too many things for me to look at the impression that it's giving me is I'm not sure if this is for me, right? I can't tell what I'm supposed to look at. Am I supposed to look at this button, this big red piece here, this red credit card down below? Am I supposed to look at the image, all of these other elements right here? Is that what I'm supposed to look at? And we can contrast and compare this with a much better implementation over at mercury.com. When I go to them for small business banking, here's what I get. I get a simple experience that tells me that it's powerful banking, simplified finances, and I can apply in 10 minutes and here's my main call to action. I get a little touch of the interface down below. These two are a great example of what not to do and what to do to make an impact in that first five seconds. And everything that we talk about in the following tips is gonna back up this five second principle. Say the words with me, call to action, because that is tip number two of the day. Call to actions are probably one of the most important things that you can have on your website that users are gonna engage with in that first five seconds. It needs to be clear, it needs to be specific, it needs to be very, very dialed in. And you can't have a million calls to action. If that's the case, then you don't really have a good business strategy or website strategy you can have a couple but we do need to start facilitating and kind of categorizing them into primary calls to action secondary and tertiary and if you look at any good service provider website you're gonna see very clear call to action if they're done right something like request a quote or purchase this thing or schedule a call these are very clear and the user has to see it, know it, understand it, and get to it very, very quickly. Here we have an example of not so great of a call to action. I hit this big masthead or hero section of a website and yes, there's something up here in this top navigation, but I'm looking around here and I can't tell, am I supposed to click that? Am I supposed to watch this video? Is it this big star thing? What am I actually supposed to be doing here and clicking on? And we'll talk about this more later, but the messaging there is really, really unclear. For instance, we fix all of your plumbing problems and apparently I'm supposed to watch a video. That's not a great call to action. What would be much better is that if I got to a plumbing website like this and I can see that this is about finding masters of plumbing, drainage, water cleanup, and I can, I'm supposed to call for a free consultation or call for service right there or book online. These are very clear calls to action. Often these CTAs or call to action should be above the fold. They should be a distinct color that's reserved pretty much only for call to action. And again, they need to be clear, accessible, easy to find, clear and easy to understand and easy to interact with. One of the mistakes that a lot of designers make is to only place those calls to action, those CTAs and buttons in the top section of their website. So they'll place them in the hero, in that masthead, and then they will leave all the call to actions out in the subsequent sections down below or below the fold of their website. And that's actually problematic because a company called Chartbeat actually analyzed 25 million website visits. And here is what they found from 25 million sessions across the web. The longer that a user stays on a website, so this is zero seconds right when it loads up to 18 seconds, we can see the distance downward that they've traveled. This is the top of your website and maybe the bottom of your website. A lot more engagement actually takes place in the lower regions, so maybe that second or third section down below of your website. So if you don't put calls to action there, it's problematic. You can see my 30-day UI design course, which if you wanna learn UI design, definitely check it out. And you can see I have very clear call to action up here in this top hero section. And as you scroll, I'm not gonna leave you there. I'm not gonna give you no more calls to action right around here 
you're going to hit more sections where the user is scrolling and looking at all the different curriculum for the course and you can see i have a clear call to action there as well i also have a static navigation bar or a fixed navigation bar that's going to follow you down the page so i want to continue to offer clear call to action simple but you can find it in some of those important areas below the fold Let's talk about words because a lot of us web designers are not good at words, but unfortunately messaging, clear messaging that requires good writing and usage of words matters on websites. The most effective sites out there right now are going to include concise, bite-sized, clear messaging for the product, the service, or whatever the website is about. And so you don't want to put a lot of long paragraphs or kind of cute or interesting or clever messaging there. You want to just be very, very clear what the benefits are and why this website matters and should connect with the user. Here we have WordPress.com. And here's the big headline that I get here. WordPress your way. Well, maybe what my way is not to WordPress. That's a clever, cute little headline, but it's not speaking to my specific needs. The sub headline here is a little bit long for my taste. I'm gonna have to read through the whole thing about building and growing a website, blah, 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 with WordPress, and it's just not going to attract me within those first five seconds. But if I wanna deliver amazing websites, maybe I wanna hit my deadlines, maybe I want a tool that works really well for me. When I head over to wixstudio.com, I'm gonna go ahead and get Wix Studio, deliver brilliance, smash deadlines, and start creating. That is a clear headline, especially if I've heard of Wix, I have at least a little bit of context, and I can start scrolling down, and I get a platform built for agencies and enterprises. So again, the messaging here is just a lot more clear. Don't be clever, don't be cutesy, don't be long-winded, be concise, clear, and simple because messaging matters. Once you've created all of that clear, concise, and effective messaging, you wanna make sure that there's some sort of visual hierarchy on the page that actually leads users to the places that matter most. And using some of the laws of visual hierarchy can help you in an incredible way. And if you're not used to those laws, don't know what those are, let's just walk through a couple of basic ideas here. These are some of the laws of visual hierarchy. We wanna give some things lower visual prominence and some things higher visual prominence. And these are some of the ways or tools that you can actually use to create that visual hierarchy. Size is one of those tools. So smaller things obviously have a lower visual prominence and larger things are gonna have higher visual prominence. So that's why we like big headlines with, for things that matter. We like call to action buttons to be clear, easy, and a pretty good size so that we can click them. Whereas if we have a secondary item, we want it to be small. We want it to be maybe a link, not necessarily the big CTA button. Also, we can use positioning. Things at the bottom of the page are probably gonna be less important than things at the top of the page. Or how about color? We can use low contrast to kind of de-neutralize or kind of kind of de-emphasize certain things on the page. And we can use strong contrast, unique colors, bright colors, in your face colors to make people really stop and take notice of something. We can also use different formats. For instance, text is gonna be lower visual prominence if you were to place it next to things that have motion, animation, video. And we have images and icons somewhere in the middle. And then lastly, you have the position that's relative to other elements. For instance, if we have real crowded areas on the page, that's gonna be low visual prominence, where if you go over to apple.com, you're gonna have main marketing moments that are surrounded by white space. And so don't be afraid of white space. Don't be afraid of making impact by using these laws of visual hierarchy, it's gonna help increase the effectiveness of your web designs. I often hear clients say to me, I like modern, clean design. And I'm sure you've probably heard the same. And often they do refer to something like apple.com. Well, that's because Apple does something very, very good. And that is simplicity and quite often showing one thing at a time. And even when they do show multiple things, they tend to be very clean, very simple, and very distilled down. In 2012, Google actually did a study about perceived beauty versus visual complexity. And this chart is a little bit confusing, but here's what you have to see here, that perceived beauty moves from low to high, and as things tended to get more complex, the yellow line is what we really wanna look at here. The perceived beauty tends to go down when we have really complex designs, but it's actually higher when we have really low visual complexity. And so keep your designs really, really simple. And in the end, just often ask yourself, what would Apple do? 
and you'll find that it's probably much simpler and even one thing at a time. You know what else users love? They love things that they already know because nobody wants to constantly have to learn new things. It's mentally and emotionally exhausting. Instead, we would love to use things that we already know and rely on already established layouts and patterns. And that means that even though you might have a new idea to invent some sort of new wheel, why reinvent the wheel? Why not just go with the old wheel that everyone knows and loves? Because that same study from Google in 2012 revealed this, that the majority of people preferred the things that they already knew. 100% success rates for websites that had logo in the top left or the main navigation in the header or value propositions high up or call to action further up above the fold. You also had decent retention rates and enjoyment rates by people who put searches in the header or social media icons in the footer or when websites were responsive. But you had low levels of enjoyment when, for instance, you put email sign up in the header or social media icons in the header. These are not traditional or standardized practices or patterns. So we lean on things that are a little bit old fashioned because people know them and love them. Here's a great example of a real estate agency website. And when we click on this website, sure, is it beautiful? Are they using color well? Absolutely. But this is a non-traditional layout. We have this center aligned uh, navigation. We have testimonials up here. Things are a little bit asymmetrical with large buttons and a big round thing in the middle. That is a little less traditional than perhaps this real estate agency website that has a fairly standard pattern we've probably seen. I've seen this at Airbnb and Zillow and Expedia and lots of other large platforms. A nice big image with a nice big headline, sub headline and a search bar. Sure, I've seen some logos up top like this. I've seen the contact button top right and the logo top left because it's more standard and more traditional. And even though it's less exciting as a designer, it's probably more effective for the people we design for. Well, those are your seven fundamentals that if you master these web design fundamentals, it's gonna make you heads and shoulders a better web designer. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments and make sure you leave a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more web design content. And if you're looking for more content, check out this video or that video and we'll see you in the next one.